Good morning, Coastline Church. How are you doing this morning? Doing well? Good, good. Pastor Lisa, thank you for that welcome. It is a complete honor to be in your house this morning. And I know um, Pastor Andy is on a trip, and so we're missing him, but want to say thank you and extend that thank you to him as well. Honored to be in your house and with your people. It's been a really good weekend. How many of you were here at the HER conference this weekend? Yeah, we had some representation in this place. Very good. Not only are our hearts full this morning, but our stomachs were good and full yesterday, Pastor Chris. And that was just, this guy knows how to cook. Have some of you benefited from his, yeah, thank you. Tofu bowls, it was something else. We really did have an amazing weekend. Uh, I'm here from Saskatchewan. Do I have any Rough Rider fans in the house? I got a few hands. And some of you are remembering, I'm supposed to be part of the church, I'm supposed to love. So you're holding back, right? Uh, Thanks for those of you who just represented the green uh, Saskatchewan love. I am from Saskatchewan, and I was a teacher, and I was a pastor in a former life, and I loved doing those things. But it was a few years ago when COVID hit that God called me to say goodbye to the pastoring and the teaching and put it up on the shelf and step full-time to lead the organization called Inspire Our Nation that I'm leading now. I had started it about five years prior, and the needs that our youth are facing on the prairies were skyrocketing during COVID, especially when it came to mental health. And you know, something interesting happened during the season of COVID... (laughs) And some of you out there, like I say the word and you're, you know, you're starting to twitch, right? Because it was just, it was just a tough season, right? And we got through it, which is good. But something interesting that happened during that season is that a lot of us experienced some limitations that we're not used to experiencing. And all of the sudden, just quite instantly, we had a whole lot less in our hands, limited. But you know what happens when you become more limited is you get a whole lot more intentional with what is in your hand. And I don't know if you experience this, but a lot of people talk about that season being very key to identify what is truly important. It was an opportunity for us to declutter the extra things in our lives and to define what's most important. Well, it was that opportunity for me, and I hope it presented that opportunity for you too. And during that time, on a June day in 2021, I was at Attakakoop Cree Nation. That's an indigenous community in the province of Saskatchewan. And what we do at Inspire is we, in the summertime, we celebrate these community celebration days. And so we take our full team and we take people from the city and we go out and we throw a big party. We've got music and games and cotton candy and popcorn machines and face painting. And it's just a time to come together and build relationship, just build bridges, just get to know each other, try to understand each other stand on some some common ground because we all love to play games and it's a lot of fun and so we were out there and while I was out there I just had a moment I asked the Lord where do you want me to focus and I looked out on this green field and there was a group of youth sitting there and there was one young woman sitting in the middle of this group and I just sensed the Lord say there And so I walked over to the group and I'm walking over and I'm a little bit nervous because these are all youth and I'm trying to be cool and I'm going, what am I going to say? And I walk up and uh, I say, hey, how's it going? And most of them are, you know, did my worst fear and kind of just get up and leave because they don't want to talk. But Kyra stayed. Her name was Kyra and you can see her photo up on the screen. And so it was just me and Kyra sitting on the green grass and her hair, her beautiful long dark hair was covering her face and I could see that her cheeks had tears streaming down them. I said, are you okay? She said, I'm okay. But I knew that she wasn't. And I remembered that I had this card in my pocket 
for the Inspire Camp that was coming up for girls in the summer. And as soon as I pulled it out and I said, Inspire Camp, she actually grabbed it out of my hand. She said, I want to come. Kyra came to camp. She gave her life to Jesus. She signed up for the Inspire Leadership 10-month program. And one week ago, she graduated from that program. Yeah. It was incredible to watch God do transformative work in her life this year. And near the end of the year, she actually stood up on a stage and testified of God's power and goodness in her life in front of a thousand other youth and boldly declared who Jesus is to her. But you know what's interesting? We go through these seasons of decluttering and defining what's important. And sometimes the clutter starts coming around again, you know? And so it was actually about one month ago that I walked into one of our leadership sessions with our youth and I saw Kyra from a distance and her hair was covering her face again and I could see that her demeanor was down and she was looking down again and when I sat beside her, she didn't really look up at me again and I'm having flashbacks to this green field way back in June and I'm thinking, God, you've taken her so far. It looks like she's right back where she started. But then I got up on the stage, I had to start the session, and I said to the youth, what is God saying to you right now? Let's share with each other who wants to start. And Kyra was the first one to get up. She stood up tall and more fiercely than I've ever heard her say it. She grabbed the mic and she said, I know that God is calling me to be a leader and to bring change to my community. And I thought, wow, she's still going through trials. There's still struggles, but this girl has learned where to stand in the storm. She's learned what's truly important, and it's supporting her now. And she's got a whole new strength inside of her. And God wants to do that for us too. We came through the COVID season. I don't know what it looked like for you. We learned some things. We gained some strengths. We make some gains. But we need to keep returning to the source of our strength, amen? We need to keep decluttering and defining what's important. And this morning, God's giving us the opportunity in this room to do this work right here, right now, together as a church coastline. So here we go. Jesus wants to help us do it. And he helped his disciples do it in John chapter 14 as well. Now, in John chapter 14, Jesus is hanging out with his disciples, and what we know is just before this, this might have been the most inspirational speech that Jesus had given to his disciples. He says to them, you want to know what's coming up, guys? Right away, one of you is going to betray me, and I'm going to leave. And you guys, you're going to be on your own. And these disciples are, are thinking, Jesus, we just gave up. We've given up everything. We've given up our whole lives for you to follow, to follow this way. You're the leader. What do you mean you're leaving? What are we going to do? I don't know if you've ever felt like that before. But Jesus looks at them in that moment. And he has the words and the truth that they need to stand firm, to declutter, to define what's important. And he says to them, do not let your heart be troubled. You in here, the, in this room this morning, the things that you woke up with on your mind, the family members, the financial situations, the job, the things. Do not let your heart be troubled. Do you feel the declutter happening? 
The important thing about decluttering is that in order to make space for some new things, we first need to get rid of the old. I remember when I moved into my condo in Saskatoon and I looked at the walls and I walked into this new space and they were white and they were clean and there was nothing in the place. And there was something so fresh about it. Possibility, space. That's what happens when we declutter. And that's what Jesus is inviting us to this morning. That's what Jesus was inviting the disciples to in their moment of being so distraught. Do not let your heart be troubled. Troubled. In the original language, that word troubled, it does not mean do not let your heart be upset. It doesn't mean don't have negative emotions. It doesn't mean pretend that you're fine and, and you're not being shaken. It carries with it this idea of a tailspin, like out of control. It means don't go off the rails here. Come back to your center. You're going to be okay. Lean into my voice. Do not let your heart be troubled. Let him comfort you in those hard emotions. So we can clear out the trouble and make space for tranquility in the person of Jesus Christ. Amen. He says to them, do not let your heart be troubled. Your heart your heart is the epicenter of your life. That's why the scriptures over and over and over remind us, guard your heart for it is the wellspring of life. It holds your desires and your desires drive you, your longings. It's the very core of who you are. And it's there that you form your beliefs, your trust, I have a niece named Cooper, and she is the love of my life. I'm telling you, this is the cutest little girl there ever was. And I love to hang out with her. And when we're hanging out, my teacher sense comes out. I just want to teach her a thing or two all the time. I think she gets tired of it. And uh, I love to help her learn to count. And so whether we're walking on the sidewalk and, and we're counting those cracks, or sometimes we're coloring together, and I'm asking her, Cooper, how many crayons do we have? And I'm waiting for the answer. And, and Cooper, she looks up at me with these big eyes and she just holds up a handful of crayons and she says, lots, Auntie. Lots. There's lots. That's always her answer when I want to count. Here's the thing. For you and for me, whatever it is that you're wondering, is there enough? There's lots. And we are allowed to come to Jesus like children, no matter how old we are, no matter how mature we're supposed to be. We were designed to come to Jesus like children and believe he's got lots for us. And in our story, in the scripture, Thomas is having a hard time believing it. Because Jesus says, you will know the way. And Thomas says, we don't know where you're going, Jesus. How are we supposed to know the way? And I can kind of just picture Thomas's voice getting louder and maybe some anger rising. What do you mean no, we know the way? You just said you're leaving. But Jesus is inviting them to believe that there's more than enough for you. That you can trade that mentality of lack, that fear that there won't be enough or you aren't enough or they won't be enough for you. Declutter. Define that Jesus Christ today and every day is more than enough for you. That he will provide for the things that he is calling you to. That you can step out and he will be there for you. So we declutter the lack and we welcome this mentality of lots. Lots. Do not let your heart be troubled. Your Jesus is reminding these disciples who they are and who they are not. He is God. He is the one who's responsible for their destiny and their calling and their lives. He is in charge. He'll take care of the ones that they love, the ones that they're worried about, the ones they've given up for him. He's calling them to relinquish control and rely on his love. 
in Saskatchewan, we have this radio station that plays country music, and I'm a country lover. Do I have any other country lovers in the house? Thank you. Thank you for representing. I think there were a few more country lovers than Rough Rider fans, but that's okay. We have uh, this song that plays on this radio station over and over on repeat, and it goes like this. I bet all I have on you, God. I bet all I have on you. And I've been singing it. I've just been singing along over and over. And I want to tell you this morning, church, that you can bet all that you have on this man, Jesus Christ. He is credible. He is the beginning and the end, the alpha and the omega. And he will see you through whatever is in front of you. He will build that courage in you. As you spend time with him, he'll even build the desire in you. There's some of you in this room this morning, you're going, I just don't even have the desire. He'll give you the desire. Will you tell him this morning that you're willing to be made willing? Can we tell him that this morning in those areas? Yeah, he's faithful. He's the one who does it. So you can relinquish control. You were never meant to carry it. It's not yours to carry. And instead, you can rely on this trustworthy love of God. It's trustworthy. You can bet all that you have. And how do we know that? Well, Jesus knew that he was about to prove to his disciples just how very true this word is. And if we keep looking in the story, in chapter 14, verse 19, it says, these are Jesus' words, Before long, the world will not see me anymore, but you will see me because I live, you also will live. What is he pointing to? Before long long. Before long, Jesus was going to travel to the Garden of Gethsemane. He was going to take his disciples with him. Before long, Jesus was going to get down on his knees, and he was going to pray to his Father, and he was going to say, God, will you remove this cup from me? I don't want to go. And before long, he was going to say, Father, your will, your will, not mine, be done. With you in mind. Because he was there when he created you. And he loves you. Before long. And he was going to get up from that time of prayer. And he was going to be arrested and flogged and beaten and falsely accused. And then he was going to walk his own cross up to the hill, Skull Hill. And then he was going to purchase back all of humanity. Amen? Me and you and everyone from all time. And he was going to do it on the cross in a moment as he breathed his last and said, It is finished. Before long, these disciples were going to see this unfold. And they were going to see him rise up back to life, having proven love that is absolutely scandalous. It's scandalous love. And if, if it's gotten old to us, we need to just ask him to give us fresh eyes to understand the power of this love. This is what Jesus invites us to declutter the things that are making this murky in your life and define the one who is most important to you and be amazed at what he will do in your life. It was Canada Day, Canada Day 2021. And on this Canada Day, there was talk of canceling this day right across the nation because of the graves that were being discovered in different indigenous communities. And I was standing at the very top of Attakakub Cree Nation with my friend Wendy. She's a teacher in the community. And at the top of the community, there's a large cross that stands there. And beside this large cross is a monument that has written the names of the kids that were taken from their homes during the 60s scoop here in Canada. And Wendy and I were praying 
And we were reading these names out loud and we were praying for the youth. We could see the whole community spread out in front of us. And we were praying for the youth in this community that faces immense devastation, where suicide rates are incredibly and uncommonly high. And the challenges these students face are great. But we were praying, and Wendy is a woman who has learned where her source is. And even though she herself has faced struggles that I can't imagine, she's demonstrating the power of God in amazing ways as she serves these youth. And we're on our knees, and we're praying for the community. And Wendy's rising up because she knows this voice of Jesus that says, do not let your heart be troubled no matter what's going on around you. Well, it wouldn't be long, and Wendy would be the woman that was driving around, picking up the youth over and over and over and over, and driving them two and a half hours to the city to participate in the Inspire Leadership Program. And you can see Wendy on the screen now. And one of those students, her name is Kyra. You see what happens? When we get clear about what matters most, God fills us with the power, the strength, the energy, the desire we need to fulfill his calling for us. And that's what I've seen happen in Wendy's life in an amazing way. And I believe Coastline Church, that that is what God wants to continue to unravel right here. And we're doing the business right here in the house this morning, amen, because it happens through you. It's you. It's you that God's activating this in so that Coastline Church can play its role in the kingdom right now here in Victoria. There are dark forces. There are battles happening. But what I know and what God's saying about Coastline Church is that you are taking ground, okay? You are moving forward the kingdom of God with the churches that are being planted, the seeds that are being sown. And each one of you, you're finding yourselves in different places right here in this community in Victoria, in education, some of you, in healthcare, some of you. Some of you are working with young people, with kids. God's placed you specifically. Some of you are in graphic design. God's raising you up. God's giving you a voice in a new space, some of you. And you need to keep your focus on where God's calling you to be because Coastline Church is advancing for the kingdom of God here in Victoria. Amen. That's what he's doing. That's what he's doing. I just want to invite up the worship team at this time, and I'm going to invite you to join me in a moment of response. So if you would stand with me, we're going to pray together this morning, and we're going to do some business with God. We're going to do that declutter work that opens up new possibility in our lives so that God can continue to advance what he's up to. Would you just extend your hand out as we pray this morning? Father, thank you for your power in this house. God, I thank you for your Holy Spirit who has been speaking right across this room to hearts. Father, I thank you for this truth that you invited your disciples to, that you invite us to. Do not let your heart be troubled. I thank you, God, that we can trust it, that we can trust your words, Lord, that we can bring you our emotions when we feel overwhelmed, that we can bet all that we have on you, that we can relinquish control, the things that we've been holding on to. God, right now in this room, we just say that we let go, that we submit and we surrender to your will in our lives. Would you help us to declutter, to get rid of the things that have been getting in the way of our view of you? Would you help us to believe that where we're not willing, we're just saying we're willing to be made willing, God. Would you come and give us the desire where we don't have desire, Lord? Father, we ask that you would activate, activate Coastline Church. Father, we pray that you would move this church forward in your kingdom advancement, Lord. 
one step at a time, one heart at a time, one person at a time. Thank you, God, for what you're up to. Thank you for your heart for Victoria, Lord. Thank you for who you are to us. We pray together in Jesus' name. Everybody said amen, amen.